Okay, so I think we should start with the uh, webinar. I hope you are audible. I am audible to all, and you all can see my screen. So, as you all know, we are here to start with the webinar on front end development with AWS. So, before starting up with the webinar, let me introduce you all about uh, today's event sponsor, Synergetics. So Synergetics is one of a kind corporate learning solution company. Uh, so we not only uh, give the training related to the certification, but also we have different kind of solutions like onboarding solution. Then we have reskilling solution. Then we have certification solution, certification plus add on. Then we have cloud adoption, architecting, practice playbook, latest technology training, and emerging technology training. So today's topic is under the emerging technology training. Then today's uh, session uh, of webinar, you can say, is organized by ATC community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. Our ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technologies. You just meet up group, which is an emerging technology community for all. You just need to install the meetup app on your phone and follow our community. So you will get the relevant updates regarding our about our upcoming events, webinars and workshop we do. Then there is code of conduct which you all need to follow. Please note, no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording. We'll upload this recording on our official YouTube channel. So we'll provide you the YouTube channel link too. So you can just subscribe to our YouTube channel and get the uh, recording over there. Then you can see the agenda for the session, which will be covered ahead in the webinar. Then the today's speaker for the webinar is Mr. Sonu Satyadas. He has delivered many technological webinars, also have acquired valuable experience in open source technologies uh, such as .NET Core, Angular and more. Then we have next emerging technology webinar uh, on prepared towards application modernization, which is on 27th of Jan from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. The registration link will be provided to you all in the chat box, so you can register through that if you are interested to attend this webinar. Then do follow us on our social media platforms such as LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter to get the relevant information and updates on our pages. Now I'd like to hand over the mic to Sonu sir so he can take ahead the webinar. Thank you all. Thanks for your patience. OK, thank you. Thank you, Chaitali. OK, hi, guys. Uh, uh, I'm Sonu Satyadas. I uh, hope this screen is visible to all. Yes, sir, your screen is visible. OK. Yeah, so. Uh, today here we are going to discuss uh, about the. Uh, Amplify service, one of the very popular service uh, in AWS. And uh, you can also see it is. Uh, one of the uh, emerging technology because of the cloud uh, and uh, DevOps uh, technologies, this full stack development, how it becomes easier with, with the help of Amplify, that is what we are going to see with this webinar. So myself, Sonu, uh, I'm the practice head for open source and .NET technologies in Synergetics. So I 
been into uh, training in uh, uh, from last uh, 14 plus years and delivering many sessions on uh, open source frameworks uh, .NET, microservices, Kubernetes, containerizations, cloud certifications on AWS as well as Microsoft Azure. So uh, let's start uh, today's session. In uh, today's session, we are going to discuss primarily about the full stack applications and its pain points. Then the Amplify, uh, the AWS service and how it resolved the challenges. Then we'll see the components of the Amplify. Then we'll see the Amplify CLI, uh, how we can build and deploy the applications locally. Then the Amplify libraries and features that we can uh, use to build the uh, full stack applications. And finally, we will end up with the demo. So if you are a front end developer or a full stack developer, you know that what is a full stack application, right? So a full stack application uh, means that you have to go and create the front end uh, and the back end uh, and then uh, connect the front end and back end together using uh, different uh, communication protocols. Uh, you need to implement the uh, uh, CI CD pipeline for deploying the applications to uh, cloud or on premise servers. So, a full stack development uh, compared to the other types of application development, like if you are a a uh, normal web application developer or a mobile application developer, you usually work with a single technology. So your responsibility is to build and deploy your applications on a single technology using a single framework. But for a full stack developer, it's very, very important to uh, understand, learn and implement different technologies. From the uh, basic technology like HTML, JavaScript, CSS, server-side scripting technologies, uh, front-end application development frameworks and libraries, uh, the CI/CD deployment pipelines configurations. Sometimes you also need to go and provision the uh, cloud infrastructure or on-premise services or on-premise servers for deploying this application. So for a full stack developer, they need to use different tools and technologies uh, to create an end-to-end -end full stack application. So it usually people thinks, okay, full stack application development means, yes, we have to go and create a front end and also we have to go and create a backend API and we need to make the front end properly communicate with the backend. That's it. But an end to end full stack application development means. From the infrastructure provisioning, yes, it will be done by the IT team, but yes, uh, you need to go and configure your infrastructure. The environment development environment. You need to go and develop the front end applications, create the back end APIs or services, uh, integrate these uh, services together. Then you have to create a deployment pipeline. You have to uh, manage the source code management that is SEM tools, whether it will be Git or something else. So. As a full stack developer, you have to learn and implement different technologies. And that's mostly a challenging task. So it will be difficult for a single person to learn all these technologies together. So we need a solution which can help us to reduce. I'm not saying that, yes, it will completely remove, but yes, we need a technology to reduce these workload from a full stack developer. So if you 
look at the pain points of, for a full stack developer. As I have mentioned, he needs to go and work with many technologies. He need to use different tools and services. So his front end development platform will be different. Back end API platforms and frameworks will be different. The database tools that they that they are using is different. The uh, deployment pipelines that you create may be different. The uh, source code management or version control system that they use will be different. So he needs to go and work with the different tools and services. And we need to create the infrastructure, dev environment and deployment environments. Integrating these services together. Suppose if he is going to go and create uh, the APIs, how the front end is going to communicate with this back end APIs? Are they using the HTTP REST communication pattern or is going to use some kind of event driven architecture that's uh, or it's a, a message based a publish subscribe pattern? So, what kind of communication patterns? Uh, uh, we can use. And also suppose if you are creating a mobile front end for the same API, you may need to go and create the push notifications or you need to uh, define the uh, push notification service. So there are a lot of things you need to go and create. So how we can uh, create the full stack applications with the less effort. For that, we have the Amplify service. If you see the Amplify is an AWS service, it's a full stack web and mobile application platform offered by AWS. So if you use the Amplify, most of the uh, difficult task which is not relate, directly related to the developer can be reduced and it will be taken care by the cloud. Something like infrastructure provisioning, environment configurations, configuring the CI CD pipelines, integration of services, configuring the push notifications for applications. So, all these will be taken care by the cloud automatically. As a developer, you need to focus on the code development. So how to build the front end applications and how you can create the back end APIs. So all supporting functionalities and services are provided by the Amplify. Means if you are a front end developer, means you are, if you are working on Angular or React, Vue.js or some other front-end technology, you can be a full stack developer without knowing the back-end development technologies. Because the Amplify is allowing you to create the back-end, create the APIs without knowing the server-side back-end technologies. So means it gives you the complete solution, complete tools and services for building the full stack applications. So then question may come that, OK, I'm an Angular developer. Can I use Amplify? Yes, you can. But if you are a React developer, can I use the Amplify? Yes, you can also use. So the Amplify service amplify hosting service supports different front-end application frameworks you can use angular react view flutter ios android and so on there are many other frameworks also supported so you can create your front-end using any technology and all of them will get same support from the amplify and you will be able to create and deploy your applications uh, very easily because you are not going to configure the deployment environment 
that will be taken care by the cloud. The CI CD pipelines means continuous integration and deployment pipelines will be configured automatically. You can use different uh, uh, code repositories for uh, enabling the continuous integration and deployment. Suppose if you are using GitHub, you can use it as your uh, code repository and you can trigger your CICD workflow whenever you commit your code into uh, the, the GitHub. Similarly, you, it supports the other popular uh, Git repos like uh, Bitbucket, GitLab, or AWS code commit and so on. If you see Amplify as a service, as I have mentioned, it's a cloud service. It's an AWS service that helps you to create the full stack applications. Primarily, it provides two components or it, it has two components. One is the Amplify Studio. And another one is the hosting service. So as the name indicates, Amplify Studio is a visual interface that is used to create and configure your full stack applications. In coming slides, we will see what are those services that we can configure using Amplify Studio. You can easily configure the front end as well as back end using the Amplify Studio. Means you can define the uh, code repositories, create the pipelines, uh, integrating the uh, features such as authentication, security, or uh, uh, data storages, file storages, API integration. So everything can be done very easily using this uh, Amplify Studio. Similarly, we have Amplify Hosting, which is another component of your Amplify service. So the Amplify Hosting is a fully managed deployment platform. Means if I need to go and deploy my front-end application, I don't need to go and create a deployment server. I don't need to go and create the environments like a staging environment, production environment. You can go and deploy your applications from uh, popular code repositories like a GitHub, GitLab. The CICD workflow will automatically get triggered whenever you uh, uh, push a new code into the repository. And it just supports different uh, uh, front-end technologies for hosting means you can host your angular application you can host your uh, Vue.js or react applications or even static web application technologies also supported along with that you can integrate different functionalities into this like uh, redirection support custom domain uh, configurations, right? So there are many things that you can configure within the Amplify hosting. So this is the visual interface of the Amplify Studio. So if you see uh, in, inside the Amplify Studio, you are allowed to configure the authentication, file storage, the functions, backend functions, the APIs, which, which can be created using the GraphQL. You can also uh, configure the analytics and predictions. Even push notifications also can be configured. So which means you don't need to go and write the code for everything. Most of the things can be configured with this visual developer. If you see, the Amplify Studio provides the features like a visual data modeling, means 
if I if I have to go and create a backend API, a data storage that's uh, commonly used uh, for uh, storing the products information or employees information on or something else. You can easily design the models like employee model or uh, students model or your products model and you can uh, configure that with the APIs. So the APIs can be created with the GraphQL and you can do that visual data modeling with the help of Amplify Studio. So it uh, support visual data modeling enables uh, you to focus on domain specific objects instead of cloud infrastructure. So you don't need to go and uh, manage your underlying infrastructure like uh, data storage where the data gets stored that you don't need to worry. So behind the scene it is store the data inside the Dynamo DB. Okay. Set up the authentication for your applications. So if I want to configure uh, an identity provider, so typically you know most of the modern applications uses federated identities like uh, instead of using the form based authentications, uh, typically it uses uh, third party identity providers like uh, Facebook, Google or uh, Twitter, LinkedIn so, uh, or Azure Active Directory, etc. So here you can easily configure your uh, authentication with the Cognito. So Cognito is the AWS uh, identity service which uh, allow you to uh, create user pools uh, and uh, federated identities where you can go and uh, uh, create the user accounts so that those users can uh, log into the application. So the authentication can be configured without writing a single line of code. Infrastructure as a co code configure all the backend capabilities with AWS cloud formation. So if you are an AWS guy, you can easily understand what is a cloud formation. So it's a Template based deployment means infrastructure as a code based deployment. So what are the different uh, infrastructure services required for uh, creating an Amplify service, whether it will be a database or it may be an identity service or it may be a file storage service or it may be a virtual machine or it, it could be uh, Azure, oh, sorry, uh, AWS Lambda functions, or it may be a, a CI CD pipeline. So all these services that is required for uh, creating the full stack application can be created with cloud formation. So you don't need to go and explicitly create the cloud formation. Uh, there are tools that helps you to build these services with cloud formation. Works with the Amplify command line interface. Yes, most of the uh, open source developers uses command line uh, interfaces or command based uh, uh, app development environments. Suppose if you are a uh, Python developer or Node.js developer or even .NET Core application developer, or any other application frameworks that you see in open source technologies, they mostly uses the command line based development. So you can easily build and test and even deploy your applications from the local environment. So Amplify has its own command line interface that helps you to create, test, uh, run and deploy your applications in your local environment. So you can invite users via email to configure and manage the backend. So suppose you are the owner of the service and you want to delegate the authority to other users so that they can also uh, create and configure the Amplify service. For that, you can invite 
other users over email means you can invite them through email so that they can also create and configure services in uh, Amplify. Manage users and groups for your application. As I have mentioned, Amplify uses the Cognito as the identity service. So if you want to create the users uh, inside your Cognito identity pool or user pool, you can uh, do that with the help of Amplify Studio. And use Studio's Visual Designer to build the front-end UI components. That's an interesting thing. Suppose if you are a React application developer, I need to go and create different uh, UI components. It may be a login component or it may be a password uh, uh, reset UI or maybe some other custom UI environments. You can easily create that UI elements with this uh, Amplify Studios Visual Designer. Customize your front-end UI with themes to apply global styles to your application components. Means you can easily apply the themes that is supported uh, for each application framework like Angular or React, whatever uh, framework you are using, you can easily apply the themes for your application components. You can even configure and test your UI component directly within the studio uh, to see uh, how they update and display the data. So uh, usually we create the UI components and locally test and, and then deploy these uh, components into the cloud. But here with the help of Amplify Studio, you are allowed to go and uh, test your UI components within this cloud environment itself. You can even bind your cloud connected backend to the front end in few steps. So in the demo, I can show you when I create a backend uh, service, it may be an identity service or it may be a push notification service or it may be something else. So if I have to go and uh, connect my front end application. It may be a React or Angular, whatever it is. So if I want to uh, connect my front end application to the back end service or back end uh, functionality, means simply we can call it as integration. So I want to uh, add a authentication service to uh, it, or it may be I want to use the backend storage service to the application so you can easily integrate the backend services to the front end if you see the amplify hosting service it is supporting a most commonly used uh, single page application frameworks like uh, React, Angular, Vue, Ionic, Ember, or even React Native uh, mobile frameworks such as iOS and Android. So there are many frameworks that it is support. So that, that means uh, you can create your applications using any of this framework and you can host or you can deploy those applications in Amplify hosting. Manage the production and staging environments for front end and the back end by connecting new branches. So inside the hosting environment, you can create multiple environments like a staging environment, production environment or a testing environment so that without affecting the uh, application running in one uh, environment or one slot, you can easily you can easily go and uh, create and deploy new versions of applications in uh, another 
and beyond. Suppose if you have a new version of application developed. So before moving this into production, you want to test that in a different environment without disturbing the production. In such cases, you can go and create a different environment. Connect your application to a custom domain. So typically when you uh, create and host an application into Amplify with the help of Amplify hosting, it will get a uh, domain name, which is a random value. So you cannot predict what value comes because it is uh, going to be a, a random value generated. But if you want to configure your application's domain name with a custom domain, then you can do that within with this Amplify hosting. Deploy and host the SSR web apps created using the next JS framework. So if you have the server side rendering web apps, so mostly JavaScript applications are client side rendering applications. But if I want to create a next JS uh, SSR application, that is server side rendering application, you can even uh, create and host such applications inside it. Improve your application quality uh, with end to end test. So inside your hosting uh, environment, inside your deployment pipeline, you can even do uh, application testing. So you can configure the end to end application testing with the hosting environment. Password protect your applications so that uh, you can work on new features without making them publicly accessible. So you can even create your applications when you enhance new features. You don't need to go and uh, publish it publicly. You can uh, protect them with a password and work on lo work locally on a particular feature. Set up rewrites and redirects to maintain the SEO rankings and uh, route traffic based on the client requirements. So typically, uh, redirections and the rewrites required whenever more request coming to the application or whenever you are uh, environment or one instance is down. So we need to go and forward, which means we need to go and redirect that request to an another instance or another uh, domain. So in such cases, we can use the rewrite and redirect uh, feature of your uh, Amplify hosting. Instance cache invalidations ensure your application is updated instantly on every code commit. So whenever you commit your code, all the user caches and server caches will be invalidated so that next time when you go and uh, load the application, it is going to uh, cache a new copy or it is going to load a new copy of your application instead of the cached one. So Amplify Studio, as I have showed you the picture where this is the user interface for, for the Amplify Studio. In the Amplify Studio, you can see there are different uh, functionalities available like uh, data modeling. As you can see, here we have the data modeling. Then it uh, supports UI libraries so that you can uh, build your user interfaces with UI libraries. And you can configure the hosting of your application. Cognitor authentication can be configured. File storage can be configured. Functions can be configured. GraphQL can be configured. And even you can do analytics and predictions. 
uh, and push notifications. So here uh, is the list of uh, features or services that you can configure with Amplify Studio. If you see the graph QL is uh, used to create your APIs, the backend APIs for your application. Suppose if I want to go and perform some CRUD operations, means create, delete, update, read operations uh, with your uh, data models or data sources, uh, you can you need to go and create the APIs. So these such APIs we can go and create with the help of GraphQL API. Another feature or service that we can see is the authentication. If you see, Cognito is the primary identity service in AWS. If you see, this is the Cognito. So you inside this Cognito, you are allowed to create the uh, user pools and the identity pools. So you will be allowed to go and create the users inside the uh, Cognito. And uh, you can allow these users in, in your Cognito user pool to log into that particular application. Now we have file storage. So most of the modern applications uses lots of images and static files. It may be uh, JavaScript libraries or CSS files, or it may be some uh, images, logos, and so on. So if I want to host this static assets, inside your application, then it will affect the performance of your application. Because your server will be busy for, uh, for sending this, this uh, static assets instead of executing the other code or other part of the applications. So the static files, we can move into a different storage so any files, not only static files, so any files that is used by the application can be stored into a file storage service. Similar, similarly, we have push notification, which means uh, most of the modern applications that you see uh, in today's uh, time, like uh, uh, Facebook, Google, Twitter, etc. They have a push notifi notification functionality, which means whenever a new updation happens inside the data in the backend API, it will be sending a push notification to the subscribed user so that whenever the data changes, it will immediately update or whenever some data operation happens, it can immediately update the front end user with push notifications. Then we have data storage. Data storage uses Cosmos DB as the data storage. Uh, mostly when you create the applications, you may need to go and uh, uh, create the data models and data storages. Like uh, if you are creating an employee management application, you need to go and store the employees information. If it is a uh, student management system, you need to go and create a student model. So it depends on what uh, kind of data you store. You need to define your backend APIs as well as uh, frontend accordingly, but the data storage can happen with the DynamoDB data storage or DynamoDB data uh, database service. Even predictions and analytics are supported, means it can continuously collect the user uh, utilization data and then make predictions on your uh, 
applications whenever the user logins it may be able to provide the some personalized settings and finally it is providing the ui library and we will see an example of this ui library so typically all the frameworks which we use in uh, today's time uh, like angular view ember or react all are component based all are component based which means uh, if you use a react application you will be creating components maybe a login component register component forgot password component or maybe a, a home page component so you can easily go and create the uh, elements or uh, create the ui components very easily with the help of the uh, ui library provided by amplify for example if i want to go and create a login page it's not necessary to go and create that login page uh, explicitly your uh, uh, amplify ui library helps you to create the user interfaces very easily if you see this is an example of an amplify applications uh, architecture like you have a view or react or angular kind of application that is uh, using the html javascript and css or it is developed using the html css and the javascript so when the user access this application user may need to go and authenticate it with uh, cognito so cognito is going to create a user pool and identity pool and is going to uh, allow the users of your cognito pools to uh, consume the services or con to access the website created by the uh, uh, amplify uh, service <clears throat> and even you can make the api calls which means like a uh, you can define your functions custom functions can be created with lambda and you can uh, invoke that lambda through http request for http request integrations we typically use as the api gateway so that the client can make an http request to So okay, you can make the backend uh, functionalities or the functions with AWS Lambda, and you can trigger that with the HTTP request. And even uh, the functions can fetch the data that comes from DynamoDB. So you, using the data model functionality, you can create your database tables and uh, uh, model the uh, data operations like insert delete updates with the help of lambda functions and the backend data storage that that is the dynamo db the amplify cli is a command line interface or command line tool that helps you to create test and deploy your application from your local machine. Suppose if you are using a Linux or Windows or a Mac machine, you need to go and develop your application, means you need to write the code for your React or Angular or some other application. You can do that very easily using the Amplify CLI without connecting to the cloud. So you can build and test your applications locally also so that you can uh, install and configure the uh, amplify cli so for installing the amplify cli you need to use the npm install command with a minus g that is hyphen hyphen global flag and then uh, specify the uh, cli tool name that is the at the rate 
AWS Amplify slash CLI. Once the ins installation is done, means you have to make sure that NPM is installed inside your machine. Once the in installation is completed, you, uh, you can uh, uh, configure the uh, authentication for the Amplify service because it is very important uh, for giving permissions to the Amplify application because your Amplify application is going to connect with the different backend services. It may be an authentication, data modeling, or it may be um, uh, connecting to the APIs or some other kind of services. So Amplify need the permission for connecting to the other services. So you have to go and configure the Amplify administrator permission so that the other APIs or other services will be able to understand, okay, the Amplify has the permission for connecting to those services. And this Amplify CLI uh, provides an Amplify add command. The Amplify add command is used to enable the features and functionalities within your Amplify application. So we have already discussed what kind of features it uh, uh, support, like uh, authentication, uh, the APIs, that is GraphQL APIs, uh, storage functionalities, or uh, simple API functions. Okay, or you can even add uh, analytics and predictions. So for adding these functionalities to your application, you can use the uh, Amplify add a uh, command. So these are the different uh, services that we need to, or that we can configure within our application. So that is, it could be a database or API, um, Lambda, that is serverless uh, functions or authentication services, analytics, even hosting can be configured. Okay. And uh, storage for your uh, application. Now, if you look the services one by one, the authentication is primarily taken care by the Cognito. The Amazon Cognito is the authentication service or identity service used by the Amplify. So that suppose if you are creating uh, uh, a React or Angular application, uh, but before consuming the features or functionalities of your application, you want the users to be logged in with a username and password. So you can connect the Cognito with your uh, Amplify application, or means with your React or Angular application, and then uh, it will allow the users to log in with your Cognito user pool or identity pool. So if I want to integrate the authentication functionalities in my application, for example, if I am creating a React application and I want to go and use uh, login, sign up, uh, forgot password functionalities in my application. So we don't have to go and design those UI components because the Amplify is already providing the functionalities uh, or components for login, sign up, and so on. So as a user, you just need to call or you, you just need to go and import that uh, services or components and integrate within your application. GraphQL is accelerating the application development with GraphQL and REST API. So you can go and create the GraphQL and REST APIs within your Amplify Studio. It is using the AppSync service and the Amazon API Gateway to make this possible. So AWS AppSync is a service uh, that is providing 
the access to the backend data services like uh, you can connect to SQL or no SQL or even uh, other HTTP services you can connect. OK, you can invoke the Lambda functions using the app sync. So if my application wants to go and uh, consume the data from various sources, then you can use the app sync within with the API gateway for uh, creating and consuming the uh, GraphQL APIs. You can also use functions that is AWS Lambda functions within your Amplify. This is uh, primarily used to handle the backend business logic. The Amplify allows developers to create, configure and deploy the serverless APIs and functions directly from the front end environments. Means if you have the Amplify Studio, you can easily create the functions from there, then and there itself. Use the Amplify CLI to deploy various type of APIs and functions and share code across various functions using Lambda layer. So if you are an AWS Lambda developer, you can understand uh, it will be uh, very difficult for managing the dependencies or shared code within your AWS Lambda. So they have a uh, feature or functionality called a uh, layer, which means if your application, I mean .NET or Java or maybe some other type of application has a dependency on another service. So those dependencies, libraries or functionalities can be created as a layer so that the layers can be used in multiple applications. Suppose if I have uh, one layer uploaded, which is containing all the required in, uh, NuGet packages or NPM packages, or even Maven packages, you can create it as a layer so that these layers can be used in multiple functions. It also use functions to uh, schedule cron jobs to run at intervals means if I want to periodically execute some task, okay, then we can create the cron jobs. Cron jobs can be created and that will help you to execute the operations uh, at certain particular interval. Okay, for that the function uh, helps you to create such kind of uh, monitoring or maybe a backup service or something so means periodically whatever you want to execute that you can do with the help of cron jobs file storage is a functionality that offers a simple mechanism for managing the user created content and the application data means within your application you may be using different kinds of static assets like images audio video uh, css javascript files so you can store the photos, audio, video files for your application on device or uh, in the public protected or private storage modules in the cloud. Means simply you can create an S3 bucket and put all these static assets inside it so that you can control the access, who can access, who cannot access, that access you can configure from uh the file storage section of your amplify studio leverage the cloud scale storage so that you can easily take your application from prototype to production so most of the modern applications are now using the cloud storages like s3 buckets or uh, azure blob containers etc so you can serve the static files directly from those uh, storage services You can even uh, create push notifications. As I have mentioned, it's very, very important to provide real time push notifications to the users. Means if you are an Android or iOS user, you must be familiar with the push notification so that whenever something changes or whenever something newly added, the application can go and uh, 
uh, send push notifications to the client browser or client applications so that, that they, they will get the uh, notifications immediately. In-app messaging helps you to better engage your users with messages they can see while actively using your application. So whenever they use the application, it can send the push notifications or uh, application messaging also. In-app messaging, not only the push notifications, even in-app messaging means while using the application, you will get the notification. So that's called in-app messaging. Send targeted messages to your defined user segments or even trigger contextual messages based on user behavior. So you can send the messages to specific user functionalities or uh, specific uh, features only you can enable. Okay, I want to send the messages only for a particular type of uh, conversations or request so that you can configure uh, within your amplify studio so we have uh, discussed about the different uh, functionalities in that the next one is the data store when you create a full stack application it's very very important yes it's very important for creating the front end but it is also very important to uh, create the backend data storage. Suppose if we are using a uh, API that is uh, managing the employees information, students information, products information, how you can go and store this data, where this data is get stored, how we can define the table structure, so all these can be done with Amplify Studio. For the data store functionality helps you to uh, create uh, data models very easily. And you can uh, uh, use the Amazon DynamoDB. Means you are not going to directly use that functionality, but it's going to use the uh, AWS AppSync and the Amazon DynamoDB to enable the data store. The Amplify Data Store is an on-device storage engine that automatically synchronizes uh, data between your mobile and web apps and your database in the AWS cloud to help you build the real, real-time and offline applications. So usually when you use the Amplify Data Store, any data modifications that happens or any operations that you perform on data will be locally stored means in locally means not only inside the uh, computer it may be a mobile application so in here the device means in your inside your mobile so it's going to store all these changes data of changes inside the uh, device itself and then whenever the internet connection is available it is going to synchronize those changes with the backend data store. So this this is going to help you for creating real time applications. Use a visual or code based interface to define your data model with relationships to accelerate your app development. So as you can see in the picture, it helps you to define your data model using a UI components. So here you can see in the picture there is a to do component is created with different attributes such as id name url and the nodes now finally we are moving to the actual implementation so far we have discussed about various features and functionalities now we need to go and see this in action so for that, first we need to understand the Amplify CLI. We have already discussed that it's a command line service or command line tool that is available to install in your local machine. And after that, you need to configure the user for uh, connecting to different the services so that you can use the Amplify configure command. It's going to create an IAM user so that the IAM user will get uh, administrative permission for uh, 
connecting to various services. And this Amplify library is going to uh, uh, provide some use UI components. Suppose if you are an Angular developer, as you can see, here is an uh, amp, uh, AWS Amplify library, which is a common library for all the uh, uh, frameworks, but depends on your front end framework. You can choose the appropriate, uh, what to say, uh, UI component library. Like if you are using React, then you will be using AWS Amplify React. If you are using the Angular, then you will be using the AWS Amplify Angular. Or if you are using Vue, it will be AWS Amplify Vue. So it, it will be uh, downloading all the necessary components, such as uh, React components or Angular components or Vue.js components to the application. And it will be uh, loaded inside the application when it is requested. Means if you have requested the users to uh, login first before uh, using the application, then you can use the login page component. So login page is a built-in component which you don't need to go and create explicitly. Similarly, for adding the features to the application, you can use uh, the uh, other commands like uh, for initializing the new project environment, you can use the uh, amplify init. Uh, you can add, use the add command like uh, uh, amplify add uh, auth or amplify add analytics or amplify add uh, API for adding those uh, particular services or features. Like if I want to add the authentication functionality, you can use the amplify add auth. Or if I want to create a GraphQL API, then I can use the amplify add API. So after you develop your applications locally, you need to go and push these changes to the cloud. Means locally you have defined the structure of your uh, uh, identity service, your uh, uh, analytic service, or you are defining or you are creating the Amplify uh, uh, APIs, GraphQL APIs or REST APIs. So the corresponding services needs to be created because as we have mentioned, if, you, if I'm using the uh, file storage, that is going to use the S3 bucket. Or if I'm using data storage, it's going to use the DynamoDB. Or if I'm using the uh, authentication service, then Cognito need to be created. So it depends on what kind of uh, service or what kind of feature you are adding accordingly those functionalities will be added to the project now let us see this uh, in action so how we can create a simple uh, amplify application so you can see uh, here i have a react application so i'll just show you this this is my a react application it's a pre-created react application so let me go and install the packages so this npm install is going to restore all the react libraries So if anybody interested to uh, try this Amplify demo, so I have created the uh, GitHub link for the steps which you need to execute. And uh, we, uh, we will be sharing that link uh, in the chat later. 
So here is this is the local copy of that uh, uh, lab or that demo. So here, what are the different steps need to be uh, used uh, for creating a simple Amplify application that you can uh, follow the steps? So uh, it start with the installation of the Amplify CLI. So I have already installed the Amplify CLI in my local machine. So I'm not going to install or I'm not going to follow these steps because I already have the Amplify CLI configured. And uh, the Amplify configure command is used for creating a new IAM user. So that also I have already created. So I have an Amplify user created in my uh, AWS IAM. So here you can see the Amplify user is already created. So I don't I don't want to go and uh, create this user again. But if I want to create this project, so the uh, sample application, the React application uh, copy is already available in Git GitHub. So you can easily clone that. And then you need to go and uh, uh, install all uh, packages. So that is what we are doing here. You can see all the packages are restored, uh, restored into this. Now the first step is I need to go and push this code into a uh, Git repository. So I can use GitLab or Bitbucket or GitHub or any other uh, Git repository. So I'm going to use GitHub. So first I'm going to enable Git inside this project. So if you see, let me first show you the application code. So this is the React application. As you can see, this is uh, having some set of components. Uh, some Redux functionalities also there. So this is a complete uh, React application. So if I want to run this locally, I can use npm start. As you can see, this is a very simple UI. So it's just a one page. So there are some dummy pages also created. So this is going to be a simple uh, UI for the application. So this application I want to uh, host in my Amplify along with some features. So first step is to uh, push this application code into a github repository because uh, we are using github as the code repository so i'm just going to create a new repository here so i can use amplify uh, app simple name so the amplify app is the name i can create a repository then I need to push the code into this repository for that I can. First, let me stop the application first, then enable the Git. Stage all the files. So this is the first commit now i need to go and push these files to the github so for that i can take this three codes for adding the remote and pushing these changes so here you can see 
now the code is pushed into this uh, GitHub repository, as you can see. Now what I need to do is to go and uh, configure the Amplify. So I need to go and create an Amplify application. So uh, let us go and create an Amplify. I'm selecting this Amplify from the AWS Management Console. And let us go and create a new Amplify application. So as you can see, the Amplify has two components. One is the Amplify Studio and the another one is the Amplify Hosting. So first I'm going to use the Amplify Hosting for uh, uh, deploying this application. So I'm just going to create so my code is in GitHub, so I can select GitHub as my uh, repository type. Continue. OK, so here I have already logged in with GitHub, so it, it's already connected. So I can go and uh, select my. Repo, this is the Amplify app. This is my repo. Branch is the main branch, so that is fine. Next. Here I can specify the name of the application, so you can give any name for your application like. Uh, employee. Amplify app. So this is the Amplify app name so that you can specify any name here. And here is the. Code for creating the front end uh, resources, so it's going to uh, execute the CI CD pipeline and perform this operations. As you can see, it's going to uh, execute the NPM CI that is clean install will be done. And in the build stage, it is going to create uh, sorry, it is going to uh, build the application using the npm run build and it's going to create the artifacts. So we don't need to go and modify this because it is auto detecting this build settings because it is understanding what kind of application it is because it's a JavaScript based application. It is identifying that this is the best suited uh, uh, script for it or pipeline workflow code for this. If you want to modify this, you can click on edit and modify this since we have the same JavaScript pipeline. There is nothing to modify. Next here. We can see this is. We can review and then deploy. So here you can see it's creating the hosting environment. The Default hosting environment is creating here. Here you can see the. CI CD pipeline is executing here. The workflow is executing here. If you go into this, you will be able to see the details. So you can track the stat status of this workflow here. And this is the domain. So if you go to this application and you, you will see a domain here, this is the domain name for your application. This is a, a random generator domain name. You can map it with a custom domain. Uh, let us see what's or what what is a build stages. Doing this time, you can see. It's taking some time to. Deploy this. It 
it may take some more time depends on the type of the application and uh, the libraries which needs to be restored. OK, so you can see there is no backend, so we don't have any backend, no backend configured yet. So there is nothing to do in the backend and the front end deployment is currently going on. As you can see, build completed successfully and it's going to run this. So let, let us go and see. OK, as you can see, all three comes in green, which means the deployment is done successfully. And let me go and uh, access this application using this domain. Yes, you can see now my application is running from cloud. So this works as expected. Very simply, we are able to host our application, right? So we don't need to do any kind of uh, configuration. So we just need to specify only the repository and it uh, automatically create the workflow and deploy it into the hosting environment. So the first stage, the, the hosting of the application is completed. So now what we need to do is we have to go and uh, add some functionality into this. For example, if I want to uh, add an authentication service, so we can use the Cognito for that. OK, so for that, we need an IAM role because our uh, uh, Amplify is going to connect with a different uh, uh, other services. So our Amplify application OK, is going to use a uh, role to connect with the different other AWS services. So the role can be created manually. OK, or you can use some commands to create the role. So simply if you are creating an IAM role. Let me show you how it can be created and what is the role type you have to create. You need to just go to the role and create a role. Select the AWS service. And from here you can search for Amplify. OK, so and. Here you need to specify the use case. The use case is we need this role for the backend deployment because when we do the backend deployment, it needs to connect with the different services, maybe DynamoDB or uh, the function, uh, Lambda function, or maybe it needs to connect with S3 bucket or it needs to connect with the uh, API gateway or app sync. So for connecting to that, we need a uh, permission. So that, that's the reason for the backend deployment, we need a to create a, a role. So whenever I select that, it automatically choose a permission or policy here. The administrator access amplify. So, uh, this is the policy will be selected. So by default, this will be selected. We don't need to do anything. Just click on next and specify the role name here and then click on save. So I have already created a role, so I'm not going to create this again. So now, if I want to attach this role to this uh, Amplify application, we can just go to the general section. So here you will be able to see the service role is not currently configured under the app settings in the general section under the service role. There is no roles assigned. So what I can do, I just need to go and edit. And from here, service role, I can select and here is the role you can see, the one which I have created previously. It will be listed here. I can select that and then save. So now we have successfully assigned the role to the Amplify so that it can perform the backend operations. Now we need to go and uh, create the backend environment. That means suppose if I want to configure the authentication, Cognito based authentication for my React application, I need to go and uh, define the backend. So here you can see we have just completed the hosting, but now I need to enable some backend features. So backend services, something like authentication, data storage, or uh, GraphQL, 
those things if I want to use, I need to go to the backend and then get started. So this is going to create the Amplify Studio environment. So this may take a couple of minutes to set up the Amplify Studio. So because it's uh, it's a, a managed service, it will take some time to go and create that particular environment. So we need to wait for a couple of minutes to complete the Amplify Studio creation. Once the Amplify Studio is created, then we will be able to continue using the backend functionalities. By the time, if you have any queries about the points that we have discussed, you can post those questions here in the chat. See here it is creating the backend environment. The studio will be created. OK, so I think it's completed. Yes, you can see now the hosting environment. This is what we have configured first and this is done. Now if you go to the backend environment here, we can see the staging environment is the uh, default uh, stage created or default environment created. So we can uh, clone and create a new environment also. So if I want to use the Amplify Studio, I can click on this Launch Studio. So this is going to open the Amplify Studio. And this will be automatically logging with a default user, as you can see, AWS Amplify Admin User. And this is the app ID. Okay, so your application, your Amplify application can be configured using this console. So this is the uh, Amplify Studio Console. Using this, you can manage your data. You can do the data modeling here. You can configure the authentication by creating the, uh, what to say, Cognito user pool and uh, identity pools. Configure the storage, configure the functions, configure the GraphQL and REST APIs and so on. There are a lot of things that you can do inside this. So. Uh, this is our Amplify Studio. If you are interested, you can do with the help of Amplify Studio. But since I want to use something uh, with my CLI, so what I'm going to do is I need to locally develop everything because I don't want to create everything uh, in Amplify Studio, means in the cloud. So to set up things in the local environment, I can use this local setup instructions. And here you can see the Amplify pull command with the app ID. So this app ID is generated only when you launch the studio. So you need to launch the studio before running this command. And you can see your environment name is staging. That is a name of the uh, stage currently created. So just copy this command. Go to your project location. So this is the project location. And you can run this. So this is going to uh, add some additional files, means it's first to authenticate with Amplify Studio. Yes, we have already uh, opened this site. So it is logging in, providing access to the Amplify CLI. So now the Amplify CLI is authenticated to perform operations in Amplify Studio. For example, if I want to create a, a Cognito pool or uh, creating some 
data storage solutions. All this will be reflected in Amplify Studio because now the CLI is authenticated with a uh, authenticated to use the Amplify Studio. So once that is done, here you will see some uh, configuration settings. So our default editor, so you can see there are different uh, editors supported. So we are using Visual Studio, so I'll just uh, go with enter and choose the type of application that you are building. It's a JavaScript application we are building. Okay, so just uh, select it. So you can see there are different uh, type of application supported. So uh, we can select JavaScript. And in inside the JavaScript, which is the framework we are using, Angular, Ember, Ionic, React, View, and so on. So I'm using React, so I'll just select that. Our source directory path means in our project, application code is inside the SRC only. So the SRC is the source directory path. The default value is SRC. Let's leave it as it is. Distribution directory path. Yes, build a folder will be created for distribution. It's fine. A build a command. We can leave this as it is. Start command also you can leave as it is. So this is going to add some resources into your uh, project. So let's go and create. So you can see this is what we have done. So now once this is completed, you can see our application is now able to perform. Here you can see there is an Amplify folder is created with the backend configuration. So here is the front end. The SRC is containing the front end and the backend configurations comes inside of this. So here you can see what are the different type of services that we are going to configure that that will comes inside of this. So now, as I have mentioned, I'll show you a demo of how the authentication can be configured inside our uh, uh, application. So for that, I want to use the uh, Amplify libraries, UI libraries. We have already discussed Amplify is providing some pre-created UI libraries. So we can install that UI libraries into our project. So this is the command. It, npm install aws amplify that is one library then at the rate amplify uh, aws amplify slash ui react ui react is for react ui components so we need to go and install this inside our application So this is going to install all the UI components for React into the project. It is still installing that libraries. Since this library is a little heavy because it contains all the uh, UI components, including tables, navigations, uh, login pages, uh, sign up pages, uh, buttons, 
uh, carousels. There are breadcrumbs. There are a lot of things you can uh, create with this UI components. So all these will be installed within this project. OK, so this libraries are installed. Now. We need to go and uh, add our first backend service. So I said it support different backend functionalities like uh, authentication, data storage, uh, REST APIs, GraphQL, many things. So here we are going to use the authentication service. How to enable the Cognito authentication. So for that we can use amplify add auth command, which means we are going to enable authentication. So as you can see, it's asking. So what kind of configuration? So do you want to use the default authentication and security configuration? Yes, I want to use only this. You can also configure with a third party providers like uh, if you choose the default configuration with social provider it will allow you to configure uh, not only the cognito but also the third party social uh, uh, identity provider something like a facebook gmail uh, google etc so here i want to go with only the default that is cognito what kind of uh, uh, entry is used for identifying the user so uh, how the user wants to sign in with the help of username so email based login if you want you can use that as well but here i want to go with username and any customized configurations required no it's fine so i'll just go with i am done so it's going to add a new folder inside this if you see Inside the backend, you can see an auth. Inside the auth, you will see there is something called auth. It is created one employee amplify. Uh, some random names will come here, as you can see. And inside this build folder, you will see a CLI inputs.json. So this is actually containing the configuration of your Cognito service. So next time when I deploy my application or when I push this code changes to the uh, GitHub, it is it will go and execute the cloud formation and create the Cognito identity pool and the user pool. So what is the identity pool name you want? You can see here it's a randomly picked some name uh, for the identity pool and the user pool. But yes, we can go and use a simple name for that. So here I can go and use a very simple name like employee identity pool for the identity pool. And employee user pool for the user pool. Okay, so I can just give a simple name for the identity pool and user pool. So once this configuration if i want to make some changes in the cognito configuration we can do this inside the cognito configuration so any of the settings need to be modified you can do that but i am okay with the settings and now i want to use this means i want to deploy these changes for that i need to run the push command so when i do the amplify push it's going to 
create the cloud formation or it run the cloud formation and perform all the creations means the resource creations will be done. See when I run the amplify push. See here it is uh, checking whether any differences with the existing backend. So our current environment is configured as staging and inside this it's going to create a uh, cognitive pool. So you will see the cloud formation stack is running. This also makes some time to set up this because it is creating the cognitive pool uh, in the cloud. Now, if you go to the Cognito console, so here you can see the employee user pool is created and is going to create the identity pool as well. So user pool is completed. So this will take maybe a couple of minutes to complete. So here you can see is there are four more resources to create. So the initial setup of this resources, this resource creation happens in the cloud, so it takes some time. Okay, eight resources created. Identity pool is also created. Let us go and verify. It's still full creation. Okay. 
Okay, so here you can see the identity pool created. So you can see the Cognito resources created successfully. Now what we need to do is to update our UI for enabling the authentication because currently in our application we don't have any login page or any hyperlinks for uh, login and log off. So we have to import some packages because we have already added some uh, NPM packages to our application. So we need to import some namespace or uh, packages to the application. So here I'm importing this here. So we are importing the AWS Amplify. So Amplify from the AWS Amplify, Authenticator from the Amplify UI React, then the style sheet we are importing, and then AWS exports, and that is uh, called inside the amplify.configure. Now, we need to update this hyperlinks to provide the support for login. So for that, I can go and copy this as it is. And this is the function, new function. So here, the extra thing is we have some additional hyperlinks created here for sign out. And here is also the welcome user message. And if the user is not authenticated, it's going to give you the other links. And here you can see the complete application is now inside the authenticator method. So now our application is ready. Now we can locally test this by using the npm start. So this is uh, setting up the UI. Still loading as you can see. Okay, I think the yes, you can see the login page. So this is the built-in UI which we don't need to create. This is automatically added with this UI component. So currently uh, we can log in, but if I don't have account, I can go and create a user here. Maybe I can say lab user we need to provide a valid username sorry valid email id it will be sending a verification code to the mail Yes, now you can see here the user has logged in successfully and he can use the application. Now, when I sign out, it will automatically log off, right? So, locally, the application is running successfully. 
Now we need to publish this application to the Amplify service. So for that, there are a couple of uh, changes we have to make because we have developed our uh, uh, application, Amplify application using the uh, Amplify CLI installed in the local machine. But inside the AWS uh, environment, the Amplify CLI version may not be updated to the latest one. So because we have created it with the very latest one in the cloud also, we need to go and update it to the latest. So what we need to do, there are a couple of changes we need to do. Front end we have already deployed and there is no changes in that. Okay, for the back end, we have to go and update something in our CI CD. Uh, pipeline workflow file. So that means we have to go to the Amplify. And here we have the build settings. Edit the build settings and here you can see the Amplify.yaml file. Here you can see only the front end deployment configuration is there currently. So we have to go and add a couple of lines for the back end deployment also. As you can see, we are uploading our code, we are going to upload our code, which contains the Amplify backend configuration. As you can see, Amplify backend. And currently we have only the authentication configuration. So later you can add the data storage configuration, uh, uh, what to say, push notification configuration, API configuration and so on. So here currently only authentication configuration. So whenever I make changes in the uh, backend configuration files, those also need to be redeployed. OK, so that's the reason here we are including them inside this deployment file. So here you can see now the backend will be deployed. So the amplify push command means it is going to call the uh, amplify push. So amplify push is the uh, script command here. So save this. Now you can see this is done. And we also need to make some changes inside the package version. So currently, if you see, there is no package version configured, but we have to say that we are using Amplify CLI latest version for build process because the infrastructure is currently created using the latest version of Amplify CI from the local. So inside the uh, Amplify service, if it is not using the latest Amplify CLI, then it may fail the deployment so that we have explicitly updated the CLI version to the latest. And then we can uh, go and do the deployment so we can push this code to the cloud. So I can just uh, use git add a dot git submit minus m authentication added and then i can do the git push okay so there is one more change i have to do which i have not done here if i go to the amplify so here you can see the uh, main uh, our stage is currently not connected to the back end so we have to go to the back end and select the environment staging environment so that means this is the connected environment so for this front end and this is the back end environment to be used save this as you can see continuous deployment with staging back end so it's not only doing the front end application deployment along with the back end staging so it's going to update the staging environment so after that we have to publish our code so i have missed this step here you can see the build process is currently going on
So we have almost done. We need to just wait for this process to complete. Next time onwards, whenever you make some changes in our code, whether it is in the front end application, if you see, it may be our front end. Front end means in our React application, or maybe in the back end. Back end means inside the Amplify folder, we have some back end configurations like authentication, API, and other configurations. So, whatever configuration changes you make, when we push those changes, to the GitHub, it will automatically trigger the workflow and start executing. See, it is still running this. Okay, clone stage is done. Now you can see previously the backend was skipped, but this time the backend is executing, and you can see there are some resources created. So everything is done almost. So in the previous time when I deployed, it was skipping the backend operations because there was no backend configured. So this is first time it is creating this infrastructures. So it may take some time. So whatever extra resources required that is creating, as you can see, there are some IAM rules because when, you, when it is running from the cloud, it requires some additional services. The right thing time for
the infrastructure creation, the backend service creation is taking time because there are some roles, pools, lambda functions all creating here. Okay, so here is a question where we can find the list of components. So components in the sense, are you looking for the UI components or the backend services? So if you are looking for the Amplify Studio, So here is the sandbox environment. Here is the UI. So here you can build the UI elements by adding the data elements very easily. So you can create the UI. I'm not doing that. And if you look for the documentation, Here you can see what are the different functionalities that we can add and how to do that. Like how to create the UI, how to add the data, data modeling, how we can perform, authentication, how we can configure, authorization, storage. All can be seen here. And CLI. Here you can see the how we can do everything using the CLI. Similarly, in the libraries, you can see the, the different libraries. OK, so you can see here the deployment is done. Now let me browse this application. See, you can see now the application is running from cloud that is from AWS and we can now. Use that. OK, so since this is a new user pool, we have to go and create. So you can see now it's working perfectly fine. So it's running from the cloud, right? So this is how we have created the front end and back end. So we have deployed the front end, the hosted the front end application, which is the React. And we can enable the back end functionalities either by using the studio. So you can launch the studio. I think we have already launched the studio here. Using the studio also, we can enable all these functionalities as you can see here. We can also uh, configure the uh, 
these features using the CLI. So if you see below using the environment, sorry, uh, local setup configuration, we can do that. So this is how we have, uh, we can build the applications. Now, if you want to update the things like a custom domain management or uh, monitoring can be done here, re, uh, redirection and redirects. So these all can be configured within this console. And this is how we build the full stack applications using Amplify. So that's the end of this session. So now if you have any questions, you can post your questions or unmute yourself. Otherwise, we can wind up the session. Guys, any questions? Okay, I, I think there is no questions. Chaitali, over to you. Yeah, so Nisa, thank you. Uh, guys, if you have any question or doubt related to the topic, you can just post it in the chat box. Anyone, any doubt? You can just post it in the chat box or else we are winding up the session. We'll wait for more two minutes. If you have any doubt, you can just post it in the chat box. So so I so can answer to it. Also, it's a request to all the participants to share your feedback as the feedback form has been posted in the chat box. So you can just click on that link and share your feedback. Yeah, there's one question, I guess. Yeah. So if you can take that question. Yes, yes. Yes, uh, it's possible to migrate your existing Angular applications to Amplify also. The only thing that the, the React application that I have used is an existing application, right? And then I have uh, I've pushed this code into uh, GitHub and then later I have added the Amplify features into that. Similarly, you can take the angular application also and then add uh, the features uh, amplify features to it in the sim uh, exact similar way instead of react you will be using the angular and you for the ui components instead of the uh, react ui libraries you need to install the um, uh, angular ui libraries uh, for amplify Otherwise, the functionalities will be same for uh, React and Angular, everything. So it's possible for existing applications also you can move to Amplify. So can we use Active Directory instead of IAM? So IAM, what you mean is Cognito because user authentic for the user authentication or for the service roles creations. For service roles creations, we have to use IAM only because it's, we, it's connecting to AWS services. For user authentication, yes, it's possible to use the federated uh, identity like a social identity, something we have used. In that case, you have to use the Microsoft Active Directory authentication configuration. So that the configuration you may have to do like explicit auth authentication you have to enable. So you need to find out how to enable that inside the, okay, it's LDAP. So uh, I'm not sure whether it's possible with LDAP because since it is a cloud-based application, it works with the uh, Azure Active Directory not with the Windows Server uh, Active Directory. So possibility is very less because it's a protocol is completely different. It's not using the HTTP uh, based protocol. 
mostly uh, uh, as per my understanding it's will it will be difficult Okay, so any other questions? Okay, so Chaitali, I think uh, it's time to wind up. It's already 8.15. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Thanks to all the participants as well. So guys, before leaving the session, it's a request to all. Just share your feedback on the feedback form. I have posted the feedback form link in the chat box. So as you can see in the chat box, the link has been mentioned. So before leaving the session, it's a request do fill out the feedback form. Thank you guys. Thanks for the attending the webinar. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks to all.